I want, I want to jump to the story from the post millennial and get wait, to wait, the... We can't finish with Jennifer Lawrence, the poor girl. She never gets any time, Tim. Yeah, she needs to be the <laughs> Come story. We got the story from the post millennial. Majority of Americans say Biden's anti-MAGA speech was designed to incite conflict. The poll found that 56.8% of likely general election voters said that Biden's speech represents a dangerous escalation in rhetoric and is designed to incite conflict amongst Americans. The Babylon wow. Bees had their best night ever with their like 30 <laughs> Biden kicked out of Austrian art school. Yeah, yeah. Biden issues non-aggression pact with Poland. <laughs> I genuinely spit out laughing when I saw that, that headline pop up. Um, yeah, it was a. I had to watch that speech because I did a bunch of radio and TV on it later on that night. And that was just some crazy, crazy Biden comes stuff. out. And he's like, I'm the president and I hate half this country. <laughs> and then the next day they're like, why are you talking about Trump supporters? That was like, I, 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 I was I, I not wasn't. talking about Trump supporters. Yeah. Then he comes out and like the policies proposed by these people are a threat. Dude, it is that people fall for this or yeah. they lie. It is, it, is, it is insane. Pandering to the base is gutting the Democrats. And that's it, it's, it's backfiring already. 56.8%. They don't like it. Independent voters. They don't like it. You're not going to win with just right. getting Democrats. You got to well, and especially them. when you ran as being the unifier and you became the divider in chief. Yeah. I mean, that's really what's taking place here. And so we have to understand the fact that what they're looking at, and when you're seeing headlines like this, where they're thinking, "Oh, this is to incite conflict," well, that's because they thought that the whole January 6th incident was actually good for them politically, and they're trying to, you know, basically utilize that to try and advance them and and you know stop the red wave from coming in. But you know, look, we have to identify for what it is. I mean, this is literally him calling half of the nation extremist. You know what that speech reminded me of? You know, like in, in especially an 80s or early 90s movie where there's some bad thing happening and finally someone stands up in the high school gym and they give this speech and all the bad guys put their head down and realize they're wrong and then finally someone courageously starts the slow crap, clap and everyone's like, yes, and justice is served. That speech to me sounds like it was written by a 26-year-old kid who was a poli-sci major who really thinks that if I just lay it out like this, all those Trump supporters are going to sit there at home and say, you know what, guys? I think they're right. I think that, like it was written by a child. That but they speech. didn't identify, it was, it but, was, but, but they never did actually say what it was that well, we as America First candidates actually, and, or, and or, or Americans, end, sorry, uh, are actually about. They, they didn't identify. No. I mean, the people they described was their own followers. Well, and the thing that cracked me up is that after the speech of, of calling us all these names, was one of his last lines was how we have to start seeing each other as fellow Americans. <laughs> and I thought, did you just not listen to the things you read off the teleprompter for the last 20 minutes? Like it really was, whoever his speech writers are, and boy, this White House has struggled with speech writers, none more than Kamala's, of course. Um, but but it really was a, it was a very immature speech. It sounded like that speech that a kid wants to give to their mom because mom didn't let me, that it, it was just a childish, immature, or petty, petulant speech. It, someone, it was embarrassing, quite frankly. Was it written? I didn't see him all, reading off a prompter or any notes. Oh, there's no like way that he rambled on that memory. long without, no, no, no absolutely not. Did he not. have like multiple monitors around the room? A lot of know? times they have these see-through monitors that are at a distance that you can't see because of the camera angles and they're looking at the back shots. But he's sitting here, when he's going left to right, it's because there's usually two prompters that are up there that are clear that actually have everything out there. Do you really think he can't, Joe no, Biden can could keep name. a continuous thought for more than 30 <laughs> seconds no, where he says no. vanilla or chocolate ice cream? Remember I that, don't think so. Remember no. the uh, Maybe Simpsons he's episode? Sh shaking hands with remember the Simpsons episode where Homer's like, you have my undivided attention and then it zooms into his brain and it's like a turtle playing like Old MacDonald or whatever, like banging on his chest. That, that's what I imagine with Biden. If I'd taken this poll here, I would have said that it, it seemed like the speech was intended to divide and incite, maybe, I don't know if incite conflict, divide because of the red background. Correct. Blood red background. You see the wide shot, there's also all this blue and there's just this little segment, but all the, the media apparatus that wanted to record it had just pure red well, blood mm. can, background. I, can I just say well, one red, thing? No, red, no, red, no, no, no one's going to do color. a big but, wide But can shot. I just say one thing though, whether it's Republican or Democrat, one of the things that disgusts me as, you know, prior military and, and you know, combat veteran, we have to stop utilizing our military for backdrop props. Yeah. Mm. You know, th this nope. is something that just shows absolute disrespect because the thing that you have to understand is, is that when you serve in the military, you serve a commander in chief. And we don't think of this as it, it isn't a political thing for us. And the fact that each, the left and the right, try and utilize the military as a political backdrop really needs to stop. Mm. I think it's illegal to 
to a campaign with military present. Is that uh, someone was? It's a violation of campaign rules that military uh, and also like even police and fire in in their uniform. They're not. They're not allowed. But but not the president. Personal capacity. The president is allowed to. The president, the vice president, are allowed to campaign. If the military can't do politics. Yes, but that's why they say this was not a campaign speech. This was a presidential speech. Again, deep concern for fossil fuel use. We had to fly to Philadelphia. No fossil fuels to light up Independence Hall. Right? Why couldn't you have given the speech from the Oval? Right. I, I don't know why. And this is something I've asked before on other shows. Ever since Reagan, really, and maybe a little bit Clinton, presidents don't use the Oval anymore. Right. Ronald Reagan addressed everyone from the Oval on the regular when he gave a speech. And I don't know why Joe, uh, what's changed. But we, mm. presidents don't speak. In, is there a more presidential backdrop Joe Biden. than the resolute desk? Yeah, I know Joe Biden had a soundstage built. Yeah, the Oval they office. have that weird that that weird room yeah. um, where they do. <laughs> why do you need a fake prop? Well, I think for I that don't... one that one was obvious because it was the back window was a TV screen, and so they could pre-record what they needed to to send it out, so they didn't have to worry about Biden. You know well, but I mean? President Trump though, President Trump did. I, I would say 90% less he was actually on an official delegation or a visitor or thing like that. I mean, he did it from the Rose Garden or he did it from the White House. Or he yeah, did he liked the East Room very Correct. much and he liked the Rose Garden. But I just, I, I'm always fascinated that we don't do more things. He did, obviously, there's always like uh, diplomats, et cetera, um, and, and, and pressers uh, in, in, in the U.S. But this was but, for theatrics. That, yeah. that That's what this is for, for the Biden administration. It's about political rhetoric, theatrics, and, and trying to, you know, assuage every other American from looking at what's really going on in yeah. America. Yeah, and, and this was obviously produced. You know, there are there are advanced teams that put these together. Josh, if you're still watching, he paid for most of them, right? I mean, I know people who do this for a Maybe living. Maybe Jennifer Lawrence Some, did this on her, on her part time. Well, someone had to decide this is the backdrop. Imagine if Independence Hall was just lit up bright white. And just light and just light. And and he gave out and he said, you know, the Constitution was written here and we are one America. And I know we have a lot of division, but we can come together and stop the division. And, and I want to hear from you. He could have given a speech that even his greatest detractors would say, I hate the guy. But you know what? I, I can't disagree with that speech. Who orchestrated this to say, like, this is the backdrop. This is the rhetoric. Well, this a, is the tone. A, a, this a, is the clenched fist. But according, the to, according to the left, though, they said that Biden has been too soft and too polite and too nice. And he's again to, to quote something that Tim talked about earlier, which is that this is pandering to the left. This is continuing to try and go ahead and buy into this rhetoric that this is somehow going to prevent a red wave. And actually, if he would have gone with the idea that you had, that would have probably have actually swayed more NPAs Absolutely. to the left than it would have actually pushed them to the right. So In- independence two to one. That's right. that's if you are running his campaign right now, that. Is, he could have came out. And that, that keeps you up at night. The way Jennifer Lawrence has t- Tucker Carlson nightmares. Independent voters are your nightmare. I think if he had come out, well, people disagree. I, if, he, if he if he had come out and he pardoned January six supporters, <laughs> the left would be forced to agree with him. You you laugh, but that's actually not that. That's actually a great idea. If, I, if you, no, the if idea you, of him doing it, I love right. the idea. It should have so happened. If a you long wanted to talk ago. about being a unifier, and again, stop trying to look at the political imprisonment. If, of if, these individuals like Jeremy Brown, who's in Pinellas County Jail, who still has no charges levied against him, former Special Forces, former Ranger, who literally has no charges levied against him and never entered the Capitol, but has been in prison this entire time. I wow. mean, the, these are the types of people that we need to be fighting for. I could say this without hesitation. If Joe Biden came out and pardoned all the people from January 6th, and he called for an end to the hearings and said, we have to move past it. He would guarantee his reelection in 2024. When you pardon someone, is it a general pardon? Like I pardon you for every crime you've ever committed? No, just for the one specific, but that is it. So right? some like there's, argue. There's not just expunged from the record. You know, at any level of the judiciary, no one can bring up charges. They would, they no would, one can. That's it. It is done. They would lose the, it is, it the far done. left and the hard left. They would. they would. The moderates they'd gain. The moderates would be like, like the you know the, the more establishment crony Democrat types would be like, aren't we so noble mm. and compassionate, magnanimous? Yep. Yeah, and then the, the far left would be like, we just want a revolution, and you're hurting that by doing this. And so. CNN would run to the to the Mitt Romneys of the world and get them to admit what a great guy he is, and like, see, even Republicans admit yeah. that he is a great, and it would guarantee his reelection it if he really it, wanted it, it to. It would have actually have gone towards his claim. I don't think the it unifier. would guarantee his re-election, though. No, it, it would Economy, oh, I, oh, I, well, economics, energy, rolling blackouts. I don't know about that. There's, there's, that's, that, that is true. I, I think we're just talking about what would have potentially have been a lot better, which anything, yeah. a rerun of The Simpsons would have been better than this right <laughs> yeah. here. 
It's like the the the, uh, the military, the Marines come out, they play the song, and then they wheel out a TV and just put a TV <laughs> up, and it plays an episode of The Simpsons. And and, and that would have probably had a better rating than this. This felt like. If, Do you approve of the rerun of The Simpsons? Biden played actually well. Seventy really, percent. <laughs> yeah, we all really enjoyed it. They were like <laughs> anticipating a fall of the economy is crumbling. Is in the okay, we're gonna need to blame somebody in the future, so let's plant the seeds now. They've done the MAGA yeah. stuff as the, the seeds are planted. Now, if shit really hits the fan, we got a villain that we can pin it on. Um, it's very Nazi Germany, what they do with the Jews. Uh, that's what it felt like to me. It is. And and when you have 40-year high record inflation, when you have 40-year high, 30-year uh, high energy prices, when you have- uh, You're threatening uh, to disarm Americans. You are literally in a recession, regardless of how we determine the new definition is. We are literally in a recession. When you look at all the economic indicators- of the suffering the American families and 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 blue collar and working class Americans are feeling, um, there is no reason why this guy should should be in office. So what do you do? You find a scapegoat, and if it's if it was it was the Jews in Nazi Germany, and now it's the MAGA. You're absolutely right because Let's, I can't run on the fact that 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 oil prices and energy prices and food prices are at record high, and talking about the upcoming uh, d depression, they're going to get much much worse because winter hasn't even kicked in yet. We haven't even harvested the wheat yet. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.